Hi, I'm Bryn Brown. When Mike and I founded Frontier Justice, we opened our first retail destination in Lee Summit, Missouri with the words faith, family, and freedom on the awning. Those words are the principles that guide everything we do. Freedom is a nod to law enforcement and veterans who use the tool that we sell to protect our freedoms in this country. On behalf of all of our clientele and staff, we would like to say, Thank you for your service. This mighty demonstration is featured by distinguished personalities and masses of manpower. March of the Troops, masses of manpower. New York at war, America at war. The tramp of soldier feet, the sway of soldier ranks, making a picture that simply shouts an epic of America mobilized. I, I was born in 1924 and I had two siblings, and a sister named Lorraine, a year and a half older, and a brother named George, a year and a half younger. We grew up on the farm, we went to a rural one-house schoolhouse, and uh, for a while we were put in charge of the band when the band director left. But before he left, he started a dance band and I got a tenor sax to play along with my clarinet. So when we did graduate in 1943, my brother and I came to Kansas City to the Naval Recruiting Officer. Uh, he was admitted and they advised me that I was almost completely colorblind. So I went back home and waited until he drafted me. In 1944, in April, I was drafted and sent to Fort Hood, Texas. And at the end of the uh, training, several fellows said, we're going to go over to Fort Benning and get in the paratroopers. They said, they got fancy uniforms, the girls like them. So, sounds good to me. New training equipment at Fort Benning, Georgia. Four weeks of training, and at the end of that four weeks, most of them were sent overseas to fight in the Battle of Bulls. But they picked out 12 people to go to parachute rigor school. So for the next three months or so, I was learning how to repair parachutes. So we went to a, a camp in New Jersey there and we waited to go to board a ship. One of the fellows was from New York. He said, I'm gonna take you fellows downtown to see New York. And uh, I danced to the music of Jimmy Dorsey in the 400 Club that night. The next day there, we boarded the Queen Elizabeth, 30,000 of us. When we landed in Scotland, we took a train down to the southern tip, Southampton, and we were getting ready to board a ship to go across the English Channel to the harbor at night. I landed there in the harbor, and they transported me you know, to Camp Mormelon, where the 101st was resting right after the Battle of the Bulge. I was put in the 506 Parachute Infantry Regiment with the Band of Brothers. So they took me in a huge tent full of uniforms and told me these people were all dead. If you can find one you like, you can have it. It had a fellow's name, Aranda, in the back of it. So then the next day, they gave me a machine gun, told me that I was a new guy and I was going to get the machine gun because no one else wanted to do that. The automatic weapons were the first ones that, uh, that the Germans shot. The following morning, they called me down to headquarters and said, we're going to put you in the band. They said, we need a tenor sax player in the regimental band. 
The next day, the 101st and 82nd Airborne were both loaded on trailers and lined up on the west side of the Rhine to contain the Germans. And so we went up on the Rhine, and uh, in order to justify this man now, we had to do uh, guard duty and some KP and a thing called graves registration. We picked up dead people. Major William Leach, he didn't have much of a, a military record. So one night he took four men and went across the Rhine River and he didn't tell anyone he was going. So they were all killed by a friendly fire. And when the Rhine subsided, I picked up Major Leach's body and three members of his patrol from the bank of the Rhine lying on their faces and uh, there were bullet holes through his leather barber jacket. And uh, when we liquidated all the Germans there, we loaded up on these army ducks and we went to Landsberg, Germany, where Hitler had written Mein Kampf. They uh, also had their uh, work camp, which was part of the uh, Dachau Elimination pro Project, and they had bodies piled up six feet deep, and uh, Eisenhower came to see it, and uh, made all the townspeople bury them. And he said when they came back home, many of them were still vomiting. So after that then, we loaded up and started rolling to Berchtesgaden, which had the right chastely, and the war was over. As we rolled along, you see thousands of German soldiers walking across the fields. Nobody paid any attention to them. I was, went into Hitler's office in the Reich Chancellery. There had been thousands of people there before me, and there was nothing there left to liberate. So I went out in the hall, and it was, looked like a hope chest. I raised the lid, and it was half full of Hitler's stationery, which I promptly liberated and sent home. Had just two sheets of conventional eight and a half by 11 Hitler, Hitler stationery, and uh, it had about 50 sheets of like form letters, 10 different form letters, and then the next day, we went into Austria right across the border and a little resort town called Zell MC. We, we secured a bus, the dance band, and we went around entertaining our troops there in the Bavarian Alps. And uh, we took off for France to go home. After that, we soon proceeded on the Queen Mary, which is the sister ship of Elizabeth. This is the jump off. This is Operation Homecoming, the last official mission of the All-American 82nd Airborne Division. Their objective, the four and a half mile parade route through New York City. The largest... We got in the victory parade down Fifth Avenue, and uh, the the 82nd Airborne, which I was put into then, led the parade for five hours. We went down Fifth Avenue. Their first salute they throw to their comrades who must stand on the curb, whose red blood and purple heart. Sort of about one week, I was there two years total. One year overseas, and one year in the United States. And I was discharged in early 1946.
I went to work uh, in 1949 for General Motors Assembly Plant, and my wife came there to, to work. They put her in an office right next to mine, and I started dating her, and then we got married, had three children, one uh, died of an infancy, and uh, I have uh, three grandsons and one granddaughter. She was a believer, and I believe that I was saved doing due to her testimony. And, uh, and at 98 years old, I believe that God's plan for me here on earth is to enhance His name by uh, conforming my life to the image of His Son, my Lord's Savior, Jesus Christ. God sends for us to love our enemies, and, and, and it's, it's difficult to do, but that, that is what we did after this World War II, and uh, I think that contributed to the period of peace that we had afterward. Americans were really the leaders in bringing about the end of this war with Eisenhower, Patton, Bill MacArthur, and I'm just proud of all Americans that uh, primary leaders of the war effort.